Hi, my name is Carrie Waltz. I share tips, tools, and techniques for the artist in you. Today I'm plein air painting at a friend's house and I'm setting up a little differently to try to video while I paint. This is the setup I was using. I'm using a voiceover because I made so many mistakes on it. This is a slick tripod. Really good deal. About 50 bucks. It held with a quick release plate my canvas holder and I could not find the details on that. I had a butler easel that gave a shelf for my tray, the Camille Prismatic palette saver. I made my own glass palette and I put a magnet on the back of a little mason pla plastic mason jar so that it would stick to my tray. I used a bungee cord for the paper towel and attached a trash bag. I have another tripod that holds a weight that will support my holder for my phone and hopefully it won't tip over when I put my phone on there. I have this double clip that holds my viewfinder and I like to zoom in and kind of get an idea of what I want to paint through there because I have a tall skinny metal canvas. This is an aluminum canvas. I'm eliminating one side of that viewfinder to make it tall and skinny. I can use a dry erase marker on the viewfinder and I realized just that day that I can also use that dry erase marker to draw on my aluminum panel. I'd never been able to draw anything ahead of time on the aluminum panel. And so this really was an eye opener for me. And I was just like, oh, I'm so excited I can do that. So here I'm just kind of doing a rough sketch as to what I want. I put in the tic-tac-toe board so I can find an interesting composition, hopefully focus something on one of the intersections. What, I, what you can see is how easy I can just wipe off with my finger the marker, transition or move things around. I decided even though that second flower was in the middle, I was just going to leave it and just see how this worked. I'm outlining my darkest darks and I'm going to try something a little different than I've done before and establish my darks, which I'm supposed to, you know, you really, that's good practice to do anyway. And I'm going to come back with my oil painting and scrub in a dry, dry dark so that it will uh, keep me keep reminding me of where my darks and my lights are in the painting. This part is obviously sped up for your viewing pleasure. Uh, it'll be about 10 minutes or so long compared to an hour that it was to start off with. But the joy of painting on aluminum is you do have the freedom to move things around. And this was one of the days that I tried some things along the way and thought, mm, no, I don't like that and then moved it later. You can see the pattern of the darks and the fact that it was a variety of darks. I wanted to move my brush and go in different directions so that it wasn't always smooth and, and neat. Here I'm laying in some lighter tones of the lights, and it doesn't have to be exactly the colors that you see, but something that would work underneath the colors that are going to be there. I wanted to lay in some colors of the pinks to see if I could keep the same value. And if you squint at your eyes with your eyes that your the pink there and the green were very similar. I was using juicier paint to go on top of the paint that was already there and changing the direction of the brush strokes. Here I'm wiping out some of the paint and then putting some other in. I'm trying to use as large of a brush as possible and keep it loose. Sometimes as you paint, you realize, hmm, maybe uh, that leaf that's that I just put in, you'll see later that I change that, even though it's there in real life. Um, even Edgar Degas said and even in front of nature one must compose so the joy of this aluminum panel is hmm, i can put something in and later on i'll go hmm i don't like that and i can move it so sometimes that's a good thing and sometimes it's not i'm laying in 
a suggestion of the leaves in the background. I don't want the background to be too distracting, but I want it to be interesting. So I thought the leaves in the back that you see there uh, would would help support the, the flowers up front. I removed some of the pink paint that was there, loaded the brush. Sorry, it wasn't quite in focus. And then trying to lay in some darker tones of the centers of those flowers. I needed to adjust the shape of the petals and you can see me just moving and pushing the paint around as I go. Got a palette knife out, a variety of different brushes, wanted to add some shadowing in there. I'm not paying attention necessarily to the exact foliage that I see. I want to make a variety of strokes. And here I'm putting in that lower flower. And it wasn't quite that red in real life. I, it just filmed that way. But I have to remember that that flower was in the shadows. So I, I'll, I'll adjust that again later. I decided to add some yellow flowers, smaller flowers, because I could, and then realized, hmm, it's a little distracting. How can I adjust that? Sometimes it's better just to go to a different part of the painting and come back to something later. You'll see me going back and forth and trying to balance some of the things that I have. Oops, hit something. And, uh, Sorry about the shake. And you see I've gone down to a small brush. Sometimes that's, that's a mistake because you can just really start to noodle, I guess is one of the words. <laughs> and just get into detail before you really need to. I was trying to stay loose, and I had to remind myself that I was trying to stay loose. Some of the flowers I'm putting over here to the right, I'm trying to keep dark enough that it still reads dark. Uh, yeah, you can see I put in that bright, okay, watch, I put in the bright red, and then I stood back and looked at it and went, oh, no, 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 that had to go. So I didn't like the other flower. I took that out. I just, it, it's just so nice to be able to wipe out the majority of the paint and go, mm, I'm going to do that a little differently. Sometimes it's just good to get a different tool out. Got, you can see I got my palette knife out and gave it a try. That's a wipeout tool. I like to use that to lift off paint as well, and it's definitely more exacting than a paper towel. The size of this painting is 6 by 12.
yep, here I go again. The red was too distracting. I wanted the pink to be more of the focal point. So again, lift off the paint, readjust. When you come to the edge of the painting, you don't want your eye to really be drawn too much off the page. So a lot of times I'll soften the edges so that it's more of a blur there. To get your eye to focus on things, you want a high contrast either with a sharp edge, a light and dark co contrast, or a warm and cool contrast. So I really wanted my attention more toward the flowers at the top. The ones at the bottom are just a supporting cast. So that's why they're really blurred more so toward the edge and not quite as much in the light because that part of the painting was supposed to be in the dark so as i wanted to suggest the, um, the darkness by shadows and i used a hake brush h-a-k-e very 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 soft bristles to soften the edges and blur some of the paint Still haven't moved that leaf yet, but it'll loop, it will be moved. Too much of a tangent. I didn't video the moving of the leaf, but you'll see in the final piece that I did. Here I signed my name and realized it was too low if I decide to frame it, so I moved it up. See, the leaf's been moved. Added some flowers up front there. Oh my goodness. You can do that. I hope this made sense. This is the finished piece near the flowers that I use for inspiration. Y'all come back and see me again. I hope you got some ideas out of this, especially with the setup.